The first casualty of war, it's often been said, is truth. Now, there was no American Goebbels spreading hate and poison, but Uncle Sam was in the propaganda and censorship business. New agencies in Washington sprang up. One created documentary films designed to boost morale. Another regulated movies. During the war, Hollywood turned out literally hundreds of uplifting patriotic pictures. America was, after all, the world capital of entertainment and popular culture. The creators of comic books, greeting cards, and advertising were not slow to cash in on the war. Nor was Tin Pan Alley. What America needs, said a congressman after Pearl Harbor, is a good five-cent war song. Good or not, Americans heard hundreds before the war ended. We're off to drive the high side off of the high knee. We're off to slap the jap side off of the man. We'll knock him on his axis right from here to Alabama. Oh, the son of a gun who picks on Uncle Sam. We don't care if it's Tripoli or Sumatra. We don't care if it's Tokyo or Siam. In songs and comic books and films, America's Japanese enemies were shown in a crude and lurid light. As iron ore is melted in furnaces to remove impurities, so in Japan, humanitarian impurities are burned out of the child. As the steel is shaped by beating and hammering, so is the boy hammered and beaten into the shape of the fanatic samurai. to shoot, smash, and slug Jap superiority into all non-Japanese people. The Germans, too, were shown as brutes as a celluloid war was waged against the Nazis. Aimed not only at Hitler and his gang, official U.S. films targeted the German people, too. There must be no tenderness in you. I want to see in their eyes the gleam of the beast of prey. Brutality is respected. I shall spread terror. Today, Germany. Tomorrow, the world. Carl Schmidt got his soul. That's how the general staff, the big industrialists, the state officials, the landowners, the gangster chieftains, put their plans into effect and prepared Carl Schmidt for his generation's attempt to smash the world into submission. That's how Carl Schmidt was trained for conquest, just as his father was trained by the leaders of his generation and his father before him. Each generation accepting and adding to the German tradition. All the American commercial and popular arts were mobilized. Posters appeared warning the public to take care. Advertising cashed in, even greeting cards. And Tin Pan Alley strained to turn out patriotic and quickly forgotten tunes. They came chasing after trouble, and their troubles just begun. So the sun will soon be setting for the land of the rising sun. We did it before and we can do it again and we will do it again. So goodbye, Mama. I'm off to Yokohama for my country, my flag and you. Shh, don't talk too much. Shh, don't do too much. Boy, don't you be too hip cause slip of the lip might sink a ship. Shh, praise the Lord. As the ammunition, praise the Lord. As the ammunition, praise the Lord. As the ammunition, and we'll all stay free.
So let's put the axe to the axis and teach them not to pick on Uncle Sam. The Office of War Information presents its director, Elmer Davis, in his weekly report to the American people at home and to America's fighting forces overseas. Mr. Davis. We've had another week of air war, the greatest air war that the world has yet seen, and its scale is still increasing. For six days and nights, American and British bombers based in England have been steadily pounding northwestern Germany. And the cities on the Ruhr seem to be in worse shape now than was any city in England after the blitz of two years ago last winter. A German broadcast to the United States today tried to tell us that the Ruhr is really not very important. If the Germans are so anxious to tell us that it is of no importance, it's a pretty good sign that they're getting hurt, and hurt where they feel it most, in their industrial production. Veteran journalist Elmer Davis was put in charge of the Office of War Information presiding over all U.S. propaganda, including radio and film. Another agency, the Office of Censorship, advised the press and newsreels what the public was allowed to know. Latest pictures of the Battle of Tarawa in the Gilbert Islands. This phase of the battle, filmed under fire by United States Marine Corps cameramen, reveals something of the terrific fighting that took place in capturing this important base in the Pacific. Machine gun nests, wiped out by hand grenades. American Marines, veterans of Guadalcanal, destroying a force of more than 4,000 Japanese. American losses were heavy. Far heavier than the newsreel audience knew. Tarawa was, in fact, a bloodbath, costing 1,000 U.S. dead and 2,000 wounded. 